This is one of Parkhurst's first use of Mariam leathers. And I hardly ever wear this pair, but I love them. G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy, and my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I work on, the Wajik people of the Noongar Nation. This is Parkhurst's Delaware model service boot. You can tell it's a Delaware because of the brogued cap toe. I bought this pair in February of 2024, and I've hardly worn them at all. And yet, I love them. <laughs> I just forgot I had them. Honestly, that's one of the dangers of owning so many pairs of boots. In my own defense though, in February of this year, I bought two pairs of Parkhursts, two pairs of Aldens, and a Cordoba service boot, all within two weeks of each other. So uh, in, in trying to break them all in, in, my, in a normal two week break-in period, and after breaking them in, trying to rotate them sufficiently to bring you a review in due course, uh, these got left behind in my wardrobe after break-in because by then it was April and I had a whole other batch of boots coming in. When I was looking through my collection to see what video I should make, I rediscovered this pair and I remembered how much I loved them. So here they finally are. They are a standard Parkhurst service boot pattern built on Parkhurst's 602M last. Parkhurst have two cap toe models, the more available Richmond and the rarer uh, Delaware cap toe model distinguished by this delicate broguing on the edge of the toe cap. The toe cap itself is quite long, and I notice in more uh, recent Delaware and Richmond models, like on this Prairie Waxy Commander, they have shortened the toe cap, which I think I prefer, uh, because this uh, longer toe cap seems quite prominent when you're actually looking down on it. And they also end ever so slightly in front of the natural flex point at the ball of your feet, if you're sized right. And I sometimes feel the pressure of the toe cap edge pushing into my joints as I flex my feet. These have a single piece backstay, uh, antiqued brass hardware, a natural coloured split reverse welt, uh, low block heel, and Parkhurst's proprietary version of the low profile but grippy Ridgeway sole. The dark brown uppers, more, more chocolate than brown, contrast really effectively against the natural welt. In time, the veg tan horse butt uppers will patina as the aniline dyes get pushed around and dispersed uh, from the ankles and the ball of the feet as they bend. So color variation, I think, will become more pronounced. But even then, I think in this dark sort of chocolate color, it should stay still glossy and lustrous inside. So I don't think it's ever going to be a, a worn out work boot leather. So what you wear with these boots will probably reflect that. Um, I think they can be worn as business casual, paired with the right shade of khaki colored chinos, uh, a dress shirt, you know, a, a button down, maybe in a sky blue, and a navy blazer thrown on top, finished with a pocket square to really casualize it up. You can also wear them smart casual. I draw a distinction with business casual, of course, being the difference between, say, going to a baby shower versus going to a lawyer's office during casual Friday. In this case, I've paired them with a navy chino, a casual chambray shirt, and a dark Harrington jacket, as well as thrown on a straw Panama. But make no mistake, you can casual them uh, a lot. In this example, I've paired them with a pair of dark denim jeans uh, from Flint and Tinder, one of Huckberry's house brands, and a simple t-shirt and a wax trucker jacket that's also from Flint and Tinder. And while we're here, I hope you won't mind me reminding you to click on like and subscribe. It helped me out a lot. Also, to help me defray the cost of my channel, if you think you like some of the things you see and you want to buy them, please consider using an affiliate link that I put under the video in the description area. Now, moving along to Parkhurst brand. Many of you may not know about Parkhurst because while it's been around since 2018, it's had a few ups and downs and had a low profile uh, up until recently. Founded by former stock analyst Andrew Savisco, it first started manufacturing as a small batch online boot brand in upstate New York, contracting the regenerated PW Miner factory that became the artisan boot and shoe factory in 2019 when PW Miner actually went under. Andrew is one of that late 2010 batch of bootmakers who 
didn't just want to start a business, but was passionate about making quality boots they couldn't find at the right price elsewhere. Now, they might all sound the same, but if you took the trouble to delve a bit deeper, each had very different visions of what they wanted to create. Recently, I said this on one of my other videos, and someone commented that oh, they were sick of hearing another bootmaker who was driven to start their business to create a boot they desired. Why don't they just admit they wanted to start a business to earn money, he said. I, I'm honestly very sad for someone so cynical that he doesn't believe in people's passions. Because those passions do exist, even if he himself has never felt it. In fact, that's one of the reasons I started the Boot Philosophy channel, to root out and explore their visions and their creative and business philosophies. If bootmakers had just wanted to start a business, I'm sure there are other businesses less demanding. Parkhurst's vision was manifest in their designs and got a good following at the time. But if your memory is not lost, you twig that 2019 was the year before 2020. And we know what happened around the world uh, from January, February, March 2020 onwards. COVID, lockdowns, supply chain disasters, and business closures. Parker struggled through that time, hardly making enough stock as supply chains dried up and his supplies in the US actually went under. Whatever stock did get produced was snapped up quickly as the uh, boot trend really was growing in those COVID years. But even the artisan factory eventually closed down. If you want to hear more about the struggle that Andrew faced, you can go and see my uh, interview with him up here. At any rate, Andrew was introduced by his other American partner factories to a Spanish factory. And to be able to make more stable stock supplies, he moved his manufacturer into Spain. I'm happy to say that manufacturing out of Spain and now Portugal, uh, Parkers have recently put on more and more stock with some recent incredible choices in uppers leathers, uh, increasingly quality builds, and subsequently are now, I think, well recognized as a quality manufacturer of some really lovely boots. A link to their website is down below. I'll also put a link uh, to my unboxing of one of their more recent boots up here. And that's a good segue to their quality materials and construction methods. Let's start from the bottom. The outsole is a Parkhurst proprietary uh, rubber outsole made in Spain and uh, following the wavy lugs of the UK Ridgeway soles. The Ridgeway pattern is probably my favourite outsole. It is comfortable, uh, reasonably low profile and pretty grippy on hard and soft stuff underfoot. When producing in New York, Parkhurst had problems uh, using branded Commando and Ridgeway soles for sizes above, I think, 10. Apparently, the shapes of the lugs or the uh, waviness didn't accommodate Parkhurst combination lasts and made them a bit crooked at the toes. Uh, making them to order obviously solved that problem. The outsoles are attached to the uppers using the Goodyear welted construction method. Now, go take a look at this video up here detailing the uh, four main different types of construction and how they each work. But basically, the turned in uppers are sewn to the insole through the inside edge of a thin strip of leather called a welt. The sole construction, uh, that's the midsole and the outsole, they're then stitched to the uppers through the outside edge uh, of the welt. The two main advantages that are often always quoted is water resistance because no stitch holes go all the way through from outside to inside and recraftability. Your cobbler can easily strip off the outsole, stitch on a new one without disturbing anything above the welt. In this case, the welt is a natural coloured, uh, split reverse wheeled welt. That's when the welt is split halfway and then one half of the split is turned up against the uppers to form a further water resistant barrier. This, by the way, is different from a storm welt, where that flange is actually carved into the middle of the welt so that like, there's a bump in the middle of the welt. The wheeling or pressed in detail of the welt is very neatly done. Uh, originally, I think it was there to uh, measure the stitching. While the stitching and finish is clean and consistent and good enough, you should note that Parkhurst designs uh, are service boot sturdy and more so than uh, service boot fine. So for example, the welt ends, it's not a structural problem, but the welt ends are quite roughly finished. The heel stack is Benz leather using excess insole leather and topped by the Ridgeway-like uh, rubber top lift. Moving on up on the inside, the midsole is veg-tanned Benz leather, as is the insole. 
uh, on the outside, the outsole, midsole and welt. They're about 11 millimeters thick, not counting the depth of the lugs. Because the lugs are placed like inboard, this makes for a sturdy but still low profile sole when seen from the sides. So it's not like a chunky soled army boot. Uh, inside the cavity that's caused by running a, a thickish leather strip around the circumference of the boot, Parkhurst uses a cork filler. This acts in accordance with the leather insole and midsole to wear naturally under the weight of your own body, under your feet, uh, causing an impression to form over time that's exactly matched to the shape of your feet. Further aiding comfort and arch support, a steel shank is used to reinforce the area under the arch, uh, both for support as well as torsional stability. On the inside, there is a branded leather half sock uh, comfort liner that's glued into the heel area of the insole. Not sure if you can see that. Uh, the inside of the vamp is leather lined, but the shaft itself is unlined. In the Spanish and uh, Portuguese builds, the heel counter is made of leather, and in this case, it's placed on the outside of the uppers and then the backstay uh, sewn on top of it. I believe the lightly structured toe area is structured using celastic, which is a heat formed thermoplastic. This broke toe cap is punched very evenly and finely, but is not a real toe cap, meaning that uh, it's a piece of leather sewn to the vamp rather than an extra piece of leather sewn onto the vamp. The uh, lace facings and collar are reinforced with the same leather, uh, same leather as the uppers, and they're turned back to back. The hardware is antique brass, five uh, generous size eyelets, three pretty sturdy speed hooks. The tongue, like all Parker's boots I've ever had, is partially gusseted up to the last eyelet, uh, which stops water ingress as well as uh, stopping the tongue slipping to one side or the other. If I have one complaint, the tongue is a teeny bit short. When the boot is laced up, uh, it sits just where the knot is, and I'd prefer it if it's stuck up a little above the knot. Taking a look at the upper's leather, this is from Concheria Mariam. Conchera means tannery, so uh, you guess this is from Italian tannery, Mariam, a famous tannery that specializes in veg tanned leather. They've been tanning in Tuscany since 1905, so know a thing or two about veg tanning generally, and tanning horse hides specifically, including cordovan. This is full grain horse butt, meaning it's from the grain side above the shell used to make shell cordovan, and it's not been corrected or sanded. You can actually see all the grain on it. Uh, I can't see any remnants of the shell underneath, so my guess is either they've been really good in removing the shell, uh, or this may be cut from the, the hide that's surrounding the, the shell portions. Whatever it is, it's got a stiff, firm hand. It's around two mils thick, maybe a little bit more, uh, but even the tongue, which is less, feels stiff and firm. It wasn't hard to break in, probably due to an excellent last, more than the suppleness of the leather, but even today, uh, I feel the edge of the collar cutting in on my ankle. It's very fine grain and the colour is a dark, sort of, you know, almost edible chocolate. And I'm not sure this is Mariam's TPR version or their Vachetta version. Now, I haven't handled enough horse butt to tell the difference. But well, sometimes it looks like it has a thin resin coat that gives it a deep inside the leather luster. Sometimes it, it seems untreated. So, and it, it could be either. Smells of horse though. I have to admit the closest I've come to a horse is in the mustering stables of some cattle stations up north and these smell like the stables. It's a different musky odour unlike the sweet leather smell of Chrome XL. It's not unpleasant, it's just different. Uh, like you'd expect, horse leather from the back end, it rolls rather than creases, so the eventual patina is going to be, I think, pretty smooth and gorgeous, I suspect. Also, like you'd expect from veg tanning, it squeaks. The squeak is from the tongue rubbing against the lace facings and a bit of the toe cap rubbing against the lining, not from the insoles. While it doesn't irritate me as it would some people, and I expect it will get less the more I wear it or remember to wear it, and I've also heard that if I use a little neat's foot oil or mink oil between the lace facings and the tongue, uh, the squeak will lessen. But be aware, it is not recommended to condition this leather with an oil-based conditioner, so be careful. Something waxy like Venetian shoe cream under there would probably be okay. On Parkhurst's website, they recommend that you condition horse butt with Smith's, 
Big Four, or any uh, boot wax or cream that doesn't have an oil base. Look, I'm sure that you can get an expensive Sophia product, but I'm pretty sure that something like Venetian shoe cream would be fine. I suspect that now that I've got these out from behind the cupboard, while they don't really need it, I'll condition it a, a little bit more than normal to counter the dryness behind that cupboard and to help the VSC soak in and soften the leather a bit and maybe get rid of that squeak. Uh, that and a lot of brushing to warm the leather, clean off any fine dust and get the luster to come through. I am really, really looking forward to the patina development on these. I think it'll be hard, uh, but if all works out well, I'll bring you a long-term review in about a year. So to how these size and how they fit me. These are built on Parkhurst's 602M last. If you don't know, a last is that foot-shaped mold that bootmakers pull or last the upper's leather over to create the shape of the boot that they're making. A, a round toe last with some volume profile builds a chunky round toe boot like the Iron Ranger. A slim pointy last creates something dressy like those English boots. Boot and last makers call their lasts different names, mainly numbers. Andrew has called his base last the 602, named after the landing ship tank that his grandfather served on. Nice personal touch. His 602M last has a couple of extra millimeters in the front of the foot, but is largely the same as his old 602 lasts, which are combination lasts, meaning that they start slim in the heel and in the waist and open out at the ball of the foot before they taper into a rounded almond-shaped toe box. The effect is a comfortable and I think elegant shape. Because of the combination last, starting at I think a C width at the heel, might be a B uh, and a D at the arch, and then opening to an E at the ball of the foot, Parker sell uh, by size, not by width. That means it becomes tricky for someone with a very wide foot. I'll tell you how I fit, but the best thing you can do if you're not sure is to contact Andrew through the email on his website and you find he's very helpful. I measure 8.5D in the Brandt device. I wear nine in sneakers. I wear 8D in most heritage boots like Iron Rangers. I take a Parkers 8 and it's a great fit. I feel the heel is very snug and supportive, but my knuckle joints are comfortable. Most of the people I've spoken to fit comfortably in their usual heritage boot size, but there have been one or two who said the 602 is too small, they had to size up. As I started to research this video, I noted that this particular Mariam horse butt wasn't on the website at the moment of filming, and I'm not sure if it's coming back. It may, it may not. That's one of the frustrating things about small batch manufacturers. If you don't grab the offering, they may not be restocked. However, Parker's boots are between the US uh, 300s to mid US 400s. This pair was 458 when I bought it. If you're buying in Australia, uh, apart from currency exchange, you have to add on duty and postage. All, now all that's going to be calculated when you go through the order before you pull the trigger so you can actually uh, estimate how much Australian dollars or actually know how much Australian dollars you're going to pay. Now, talking listed US dollars, mid 400s, uh, then they compare to say Truman boots, which I think are the same quality. I personally don't find that the Truman 79 last works with my foot, so I prefer the Parkhurst. If you compare to say Oak Street bootmakers, they're the same quality too, I think, but Oak Street are up to 100 US more. Comparing to Grant Stone, arguably a more finely constructed boot, uh, Grant Stone are in the high 300s US. The difference though is I think the Grant Stone, despite their exotic leather choices, are a dressier lasted boot and not necessarily something as rugged as these. Horses for courses. All in all, I think the value is fair. If you like the design and style and soul of Parker's makeups, it'll be more than fair as, you know, you, you usually buy what you like rather than what you think is worth it as long as it's not totally out of hand. So that's my take on the Parkhurst Delaware boot. This one in Mariam Horsebutt. I'll bring it back sometime uh, later to show you how it's aged. In the meantime, now that I've dug it out, <laughs> I, I wear it more often, so watch out for it on my Instagram account. And before I go, I, I hope you click on like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have time, go check out my website at bootlosophy.com. Until the next time, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon.